God has lit a lamp. We read about it in John's Gospel in the first few verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was go with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Here then of John the Baptist, he was to bear witness of the light. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. The light is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He has come as promised. And in love. God has given him to light up a dark world. A world which you know is darkened by suffering and lies. A world suffering from all the effects of the fall. A world engulfed by the darkness of sin and the misery that sin always produces. Into our world comes the Lord Jesus, full of grace and God has lit a lamp. Hebrews chapter 1, first four verses. Wonderful words. The light of Christ coming in. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much more better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Yes, the Lord Jesus is better. He is brighter than the brightest angels. He is the brightness of the glory of God. We could fast forward into Revelation 21, verse 23, and we read there that heaven doesn't need the sun and the moon, for the glory of God illuminates it. The Lamb is its light. Back in Luke chapter 9, verse 29, we've got a brief moment where that sublime glory of Jesus was allowed to shine in the transfiguration. It was only for the eyes of Peter, James, and John. And we might call that Christ's own glory, for he is the eternal Son of God. He is infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. Such eternal light Christ always had and always will be. His light in that sense had no beginning, no end, no being lit. Here in Luke 11, verse 33, there is a lamp being lit. A lamp that was not lit before. This is gospel light. The light of Christ as the Savior. The Savior of his people. The light that was promised in the Old Testament. That light has now dawned in the coming of Christ. And here in our, in our text this morning, Luke 11, 33 to 36, I want us to listen to what Jesus says about this light. Number one, the light of Christ must be seen, must be seen. Verse 33. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand. Those who come in may see the light. And yes, as we did with the young ones, consider Christ and his earthly ministry. He's God's light to the world. He is the lamp that has been promised and now it's finally lit. And in himself, he fulfills the wisdom of these words perfectly. Because his life and ministry, they were not hidden. He preaches openly from the beginning. He's not skulking around in the background. He's not assembling together a band of revolutionaries in some sort of underground fashion. He and his ministry have not been in a secret place. Not under a basket. He's been seen and heard by many. His fame goes before him now. He's cast out demons. He's healed many, many people. 
I'm always struck by that verse in Luke 4, verse 40. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Isn't that brilliant? That's our Jesus. Cleansed lepers. He made the blind to see, the lame to walk, the dead to rise, calmed the storm, fed the multitudes, called 12 special disciples to be so close to him. And then he sent them out. Christ taught about the kingdom of God. They were given authority to teach about the kingdom of God and the good news of the kingdom. Christ also pronounced forgiveness of sins. He has come. The Messiah has come. He has not shied away from controversy either. He's taken on the scribes and the Pharisees when they sought to trick him. He's already exposed their hypocrisy. And in the next verses after these, Jesus will pronounce a whole series of woes on those who oppose him. They contrast Jesus' mission, shining in the open, with the actions of the Pharisees in the last verse of this chapter. They're lying in wait, trying to catch Jesus in something that he might say. Yes, the Lord Jesus, he's the promised light. The lamp has been lit, and he's shining in grace and truth throughout all Galilee and Judea. Followed him into Samaria. He's shining the light to the Gentiles as well. His light is a wonderful life giving light. His light has transformed the lives of so many individuals already. He has not been hidden. His light has brought life to many. All who have come to see him for the light that he really is, you never see him again. you this morning, have you seen the light of Christ? Have you seen something of his glory? The glory of his person as the Son of God and the glory of his mission as the Savior of sinners? Are you transformed? Are you converted? Are you saved? Because Christ is not hidden. Christ Jesus still shines in our world. He's still doing it. He's still saving sinners. Still transforming those who are dead in sin into those who are living sons and daughters of God. He's still building his church. And, and yes, we, we live in a fallen, sinful world. And yes, we see darkness and we see wickedness. And we see it at every strata of society. It's always there. That's not the whole story, is it? Praise God. Because he lit a lamp. And the darkness is being dispelled in the hearts and lives of millions of believers across the world. And we're just a tiny, tiny part of that church of the Lord Jesus this morning. This morning there are millions of Christians giving praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. They have assembled together as he has commanded and they're singing praise to him. And with us, they, they have seen the light. They've seen Jesus. He has shown in their hearts. Paul uses that language in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Please don't buy into the darkness that's being peddled in our world. Don't, don't focus so much on the darkness of you know, rising bills, rising fears of diseases and wars and so on. Don't live in the darkness of fear and gloom as if there is no light in the world. The lamp has been lit. And he has shone brightly shone brightly in his life and his ministry and he's shone brighter still in his death and in his resurrection and he has died for sinners he died for me he was raised for my justification he is my salvation he is my friend, my brother, my lord and my master and believer you can say the same he is risen for you he is your light 
He is your shield. He is your good shepherd. He is your sure and certain hope. He has already prepared a place for you in paradise, and he will certainly come again for you. Indeed, all who come to him may see his light, because he's fulfilled this verse 33. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. Well, you've come in this morning, but the question remains, have you really seen the light? That is Jesus. Because secondly, the light of Christ must be received. It must be received. How is the light of Christ received? Well, verse 34, and what Christ says there, helps us to have a proper understanding of this. He says, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. I said this first then, for those who physically saw Jesus in the flesh. Because not all who physically saw Jesus believed in him. The Pharisees, they witnessed Jesus healing people. They witnessed him cleansing lepers and freeing people from demon possession. But they remained opposed to him. Their eyes saw good things, good light. But their eyes were bad. And actually they misinterpreted the good light of Jesus as being something evil. The light was good. The eyes of their understanding were bad. They were blinded. They would not, could not believe. As a result, Jesus says in this verse 34, their body was full of darkness. And so it was, their lives, their lives full of darkness. We find them lying in wait, trying to trick Jesus, trying to catch him out, that they may do away with him. They want him dead. We find them later on conspiring, orchestrating the death of the Son of God. They failed to receive the light. The light that was on a lampstand, the light that was shining brightly, shining right before their very eyes, but they would not believe. They preferred the darkness. The eyes are important, says Jesus. The lamp of the body is important. The eyes of the understanding, they're important. Listen to how Paul prays for the Ephesians in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. He prays that God may I give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. So we need to take care of our eyes in both senses. Good eyes, healthy eyes, sound eyes will mean your whole body will be full of light. Your life. Your life will be lit up. It will be illuminated by the light of Christ. He'll be seen in how you live. But bad eyes, diseased eyes, troublesome eyes, well, that will mean your body, your, your life is full of darkness. Darkness of sin. And Jesus says, not just playing with words here, it's serious business. And all of us hearers, both then and now, we need to hear what Jesus has to say. Verse 35, he lays it out plainly. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. And just to be clear, Jesus is not talking about some sort of, you know, new age inner light that we can maybe find within ourselves. No, the light that is in a believer is a light that they have received. It's not a light that we ourselves somehow generate or we find hidden away in the recesses of our hearts. That's why the lamp of the eye is so important. It's through the lamp of the eye that we receive the light of Christ. And that usually involves the physical eyes as well as the eyes of our understanding. Take heed, says Jesus. Take heed what you look at what images are your eyes beholding what TV shows and movies are streaming through your eyes and then lodging in your mind and in your heart what are you reading is 
it enlightening. You know, I read a rather long spiel in a comment on Facebook a few days ago, and the one writing uh, this sort of rant was clearly thinking that they were enlightened. They had it. They had the truth. Now, I wasn't a big expert on the subject, but I knew from reading it that the post was written by another. It's not a technical term. Um, but so much of social media is like that nowadays. So many experts who have the light and they're sh shedding it on you, passing on that light through what they post. The trouble is, I don't think they've read Luke 11.35. Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. You think it's light, but actually it's just darkness. But the lamp is lit, and the light is Christ. John 1, it's already told us that. In him was life, and the light was the light of men. Again, John 1, we read that Christ is the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. What does the light of Christ read like? in a post John 1 verse 14 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory is of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so take heed what your eyes see and read and linger over the light that you are seeing is sadly often darkness and often you can tell us darkness because there's no grace and there's no truth. Once the darkness is let in through the eye, says Jesus, it affects the whole person, the whole body. It's not just absorbed in the retina and that's the end of it. No, no. It affects your life, what you see, what you watch, what you read. And yes, by the grace of God, our minds, when they're being sanctified, we can filter out much. Some lies, you can spot a mile away. Some rants, you just see, that is just a rant. But the evil one is coming. Take heed, says Jesus. Be careful what you let in through your eyes. He's warned us about the darkness, the negative, the bad. But actually, in verse 34, Jesus starts with the light, the positive, the good. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, the whole body also is full of light. Well, that sounds great, doesn't it? But you want that. Your whole body to be full of light. It sounds fresh and right and good. But it is not a man-made light. Again, it's not some sort of inner peace that you'll find in yourself if you go up a mountain in Tibet or something like that not some synthetic light brought on by hallucinations or meditations or some higher plain mumbo jumbo this light is from the lamp that God lit it's Christ himself get your eyes on Jesus then Hebrews 12 verse 2 tells us looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith have you seen him are you looking unto him Look to him with the eye of faith and believe that he died for you. Look to him and believe that he suffered the hell that you deserve and that he has set you free from the penalty and from the power of sin. Repent of the darkness, turn from the darkness and run to Jesus and trust in him. He is the author of your faith. And believer, keep on looking to Jesus. Keep your eyes on Christ reading your Bible, keep studying your Bible walk with him, live for him serve him wholeheartedly he alone is the finisher of your faith so consider then please for a moment how much your eyes have been in the word of God think about the light that your eyes have seen are your eyes healthy and sound or are you filling your eyes and therefore your whole body, your, your life with something else? Maybe not kind of bad in and of itself, but it's something other than the light of Christ. See, God has lit a lamp. God has placed him on a lampstand. Keep your eyes on Jesus. It's absolutely.
absolutely necessary if we're to shine for Christ in a dark world. But Jesus says in verse 36, fill your eyes, your whole body, your whole life with Christ, and then you'll be full of light, radiating his light, shining his light into a dark world. That's our chief end. That's why we're here. That's our calling. That's our third point. The light of Christ must shine bright. Verse 36. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. This is what happens when we truly see and receive the light of Christ. We end up like little lamps ourselves. We ourselves shine, not with our own light, but with the light we have received, the light of Christ. And believer, you have this. You have Christ within you. He is with you through the person and work of the Holy Spirit. He's the one who keeps opening your eyes, who keeps redirecting your eyes back to the Savior again and again. Jesus prayed that he would do that, that he would come and be our helper. John 14, verse 26. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. He's the one who enables us to shine the light of Christ. He's the one who keeps our eyes healthy so that we remember the things of Christ. We quickly forget, don't we? Quickly get distracted. But he gives us the Holy Spirit. John 15, verse 26, Jesus said, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. always pointing us back to Christ. He's the one who enables us to shine that pure light of Christ in a dark world. And yet perhaps this morning you feel you're not really shining so brightly for Christ. Perhaps you read the words of Jesus in verse 36 and you think to yourself okay I have Christ's light but those three words of Jesus it's just not where I'm at no part dark can we ever get there can we ever say in this world my whole body is full of light I have no part dark Christ here takes us to the very heart of the gospel. Listen to what John says in 1 John 1, 5-7. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. This is the message, says John. This is the gospel. This is pure gospel light. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. His blood. His death, his resurrection, cleanses us from all sin. The gospel light of Christ dispels all darkness. When Christ forgives, he forgives all our sins. He doesn't leave some sins unforgiven. He doesn't leave any part dark. Now, this does not mean that we are sinless, and we know that. It doesn't mean that no sin remains in our lives. Sadly, we know that the presence of sin will remain with us until we reach the glory of heaven. But that sin that remains, the sins that we struggle to put to death, the sins that continue to cast us down, they are covered. By the blood of Jesus. His blood cleanses us 
from all sin. No part dark. John goes on to say in verses 8 and 9 of 1 John, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, no part dark does not mean that we say, I have no sin. He says if we do that, we're deceiving ourselves. We're lying to ourselves. Rather, we quickly confess our sins. We confess our dark and we are cleansed from all unrighteousness. This then is an ongoing sanctification. Constant turning from sin. Constant looking unto Jesus for cleansing and for strength. It is, as John calls it, a walk in the light close walk with the light of the world a life lived with Jesus as we live with him as we walk in his light then we are bright shining lamps and those who know us those who we rub shoulders with in the world they can see his light and do they and do they are you shining for Christ this morning let me ask you Are you forgiven? Or are you not? Are you forgiven? Or are you not? See, I I fear perhaps uh, at times is, you know, we imagine a sort of grey area in between. And we'll say something like, yes, I'm forgiven, but... And if we're honest, all of us can fill in a whole catalogue of sins that we still fall into. But come to the cross. Come to the cross and answer the question. Are you forgiven? You see how brilliant the light of Christ is. He has paid for all your sins, believer. Yes, we, we fall, we struggle, we sin. We cannot deny it. But are you forgiven? That's amazing light. Walk in that light. Take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Take heed that that's the light you're living in. Keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Shine for him, live for him. Tell others of his love and forgiveness in the gospel. But if you take heed and you discover, actually, that the light in you is darkness, if you realize this morning that you're just trying to be a sort of decent person, trying to please others and please God by being nice and doing good things, know for sure that light, that is not light, that is darkness. It is Jesus' light you need, because he alone cleanses from all sin. Only Jesus can shine in your heart and leave no part dark. God has lit a lamp and the light of Christ shines in this world come to him see his light receive his light receive it with gladness and then shine for the one who forgives all your sins no Lord God, we are so unworthy of those three words, but we thank you that Christ has died for all our sins. We thank you that his blood cleanses us from all sin. Lord, this is marvelous light. Help us to walk in it us to keep on receiving it and help us Lord to shine it for Jesus.